If leftover pasta is ever an issue at your house, then why not turn that into a beautiful weeknight dinner casserole full of nutritious veggies and some cheese to really keep everybody happy. This casserole is sure to blow your mind. Full recipe will be on the description box. So if you saw and made my spaghetti meatballs from last week and you made way too much spaghetti by mistake, then this is the recipe for you to follow to really make it into something special. Let's get started right now. So we'll start by heating up our pan on medium heat and add in some olive oil. Then go ahead and add in your chopped veggies. So we'll start by adding in our onions, then our chopped poblano peppers. Adds a nice bit of heat and then a bit of minced garlic as well. Now start stirring this and we'll saute until the veggies start to become soft. We're not gonna cook it all the way until they're completely soft, just halfway because really soon after when they start to look kind of like this, moist, bit translucent, then we'll add in all of our chopped portobello mushrooms. That's gonna release lots of moisture and our veggies are gonna steam in that mushroom moisture that's gonna be released. So it's gonna cook it anyways and we don't wanna overcook those veggies at all. Now once the mushrooms have started to release most of their water and they start to look kind of browned like this, create a well in the middle of your pan and here's where we're gonna add our minced meat. And here you can feel free to add whichever minced meat that you like the most and then make sure to start breaking that meat down and make sure there's no lumps at all. We don't want any clumps in the final product. So just work at it and make sure to season it with some salt and pepper as well. I prefer seasoning the meat when it's still pink so it can really get absorbed inside. So it's not just on the outside. So when it's still pink, season with your salt and pepper and then continue to cook this down until the meat is no longer pink. Now we can add in our tomatoes to really make our sauce. Now here are some San Marzano type whole tomatoes and try to find a can that says San Marzano. Of course, if you can get fresh San Marzano, use that instead. But where I live, there's no way you're gonna get this fresh. Now break those tomatoes down just so we have little lumps and little chunks of tomatoes in our sauce. It's gonna create a nice, nice texture in the final casserole. It'll basically be like little pockets of sweet tomatoey flavor, which I love for these tomatoes. Now we don't want to overdo the sauce with a bunch of Italian seasonings. Keep it simple. Those peppers have lots of flavor. Onions have lots of flavor. We're simply seasoning this with some salt, then some oregano and a bit of chili flakes just for your tastes. And once we've done mixing in all of those seasonings, there's really not much cooking left for us to do. We just want to simmer it lightly until the sauce has thickened a bit. The tomatoes is what makes this dish what it is. Get the best quality San Marzano type tomatoes for this recipe and get the whole tomatoes that you can then break down into little chunks like this by yourself. In the meanwhile, bring your water up to a boil, season with salt, and then cook your spaghetti halfway. And preheat your oven at 400 Fahrenheit as well. If you live to cook and you want to take your cooking skills to the next level, then be sure to subscribe to this channel. I have a couple of years of experience working at a professional kitchen, and I hope to use those skills to really show you how to get the food from your fridge to the table in the most efficient and most delicious way possible. And if you're wondering when to stop simmering your sauce, this is the perfect level of consistency. We wanna have enough moisture to finish cooking the pasta because as I mentioned before, we're only cooking this halfway. So if I show you one of the noodles, it is still kinda opaque. It's not translucent yet. And you can see like it's still kinda dark. Cooked pasta becomes lighter in color. And if I try to break this pasta, you can see that it's still feels and looks rigid. Cooked pasta would have just limped completely. So now whip out your favorite casserole and then put all your spaghetti or your any other pasta that you're having into there and then pour in all of that beautiful fresh sauce. The fun part is just mixing in all that sauce 
with the pasta and snacking in the middle. I don't care if the pasta is not fully cooked, that sauce makes everything taste good. So now we are ready to start topping this with some cheese. Now here's some cubed smoked applewood cheddar and then I'm also going to add in some cubed mozzarella as well. You can choose to just shred the cheese instead instead of cubing it but I just like it this way to really show off the pasta, the sauce along with the cheese and I want to cover everything with that cheese. Now cover the casserole with a lid or foil paper and put it in the oven for at least 20 minutes and after 20 minutes you're gonna have magic in that casserole. Have a look at this. That is something else. I'm pretty sure a recipe for a baked spaghetti is one of my oldest recipes right when I first started doing YouTube and the story behind this casserole is something special. My girlfriend's mom actually got this for a gift and she carried it in the rain and it was pretty heavy. So it's been a really great tool in the kitchen and the best part about it is that lid. So I don't have to like mess around with foil paper on top if I want to melt something without browning or burning anything at the top. So that pasta by now has completely cooked. You can see how soft it is. You can see how easily it breaks and it's just packed full of flavor. All that's left to do now is top it with some basil and grab your forks. Now if you really want, you can broil it for the last five minutes once the cheese is molten and the pasta is done cooking. I quite enjoy having little bits of crispy spaghetti with some browned cheese, but some people just like it soft and just molten and gooey. So do whatever you prefer. So I hope you guys enjoyed this revamped and improved version of my baked spaghetti casserole. So let me know what's your favorite baked pasta dish and if you're enjoying this video, then make sure to like it so other people with casseroles can enjoy this great pasta recipe. Share this recipe with somebody who somehow is always stuck with leftover pasta. And if you want to see my spaghetti and meatballs from last week, check out the link over here. And for more casserole dishes, check out the full playlist. See you in the next one. Bye guys.